Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Instruction Type DAA. Today we are in the final part that is part 2. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, let me remind you we are studying about decimal addition in 8085 microprocessor. And in this session we are going to learn about the DAA instruction. Now in the previous session itself, if you remember, we learnt about the BCD numbers. There we also learnt about the invalid BCD numbers and how using the correction, which is specifically 6 in case of BCD, we can convert the invalid BCD into a valid BCD sequence. I hope you remember why do we use exactly 6. The reason is there are 6 invalid BCDs and we want to skip them and make sure there is a carry which has been generated after the operation has been performed and the rest of the bits, they fall under the valid BCD sequences. Now in order to perform this particular correction, in 8085 microprocessor, the DA instruction is used. Let me explain the situation with an example. Say we would like to add two values, 38 and 45. Now in case of microprocessor, everything is in binary, so it will be helpful for us if we consider this addition in hexadecimal. Now since we are talking about BCDs, what will be the BCD representation of 38? Well 3 is going to be 0011. What about 8? The BCD encoding for 8 is 1 followed by triple zero. Let's do the same for 45. For 4, we will have 0100. What about 5? The BCD sequence for this is 0101. Let's perform the addition now. 0 plus 1 will give us 1. 0 plus 0, evidently 0. 0 plus 1 again will result in 1. 1 plus 0 will also result in 1. Let's focus on the next 4 bits. Well, we have got 1s in here and zeros in this place. Again, we have got 0 in here and 1 in this place. So the result is going to be 0 followed by triple 1. Now we are considering this addition in hexadecimal. So 1101, which is 13 in case of decimal. In case of hexadecimal, it will be D, right? What about 0 followed by triple 1? Well, it is 7 in both in hexadecimal and also in decimal. Now tell me, is the season addition which is in decimal? Well, not. In decimal, we don't have the symbol D, right? And if we consider the BCD chart, this part, that is 1101, it is the number which comes after the largest single digit decimal, 1001, that is 9. And this sequence is an invalid BCD sequence. Because if you notice the addition as well, this is 8 and this is 5. Addition of these two in decimal would have resulted in 13, so 3 as sum we would have received, and the carry one would have been added with this part, making it 8. So in order to make it a valid BCD, the DA instruction comes at rescue. Now the instruction DA stands for Decimal Adjust Accumulator. Try to understand this. After the addition has been performed, the result is supposed to be stored inside the accumulator itself. Now based on the content, the DA instruction is going to adjust the accumulator according to the coding of decimal in BCD. And what the instruction will do is going to depend on the contents of the accumulator, auxiliary carry and carry flags. I'll get into the technicalities in a moment, but before that, let me tell you some more information regarding the instruction DAA. The instruction DAA falls under the category of one byte long instructions. Now, if you think about the instruction, this instruction is actually the example of implied or inherent addressing mode. Previously, we have studied about XCHG. Executing XCHG, the 8085 microprocessor exchanges the contents of the DE register pair with HL register pair. But if you consider the instruction, we never mentioned anything about these register pairs, did we? So to the microprocessor, it is inherent. Similarly, in case of DA, 
During the execution of this instruction, the microprocessor will know that a BCD operation has just been performed and the user wants to make sure that the contents of the accumulator is in valid BCD format. So within the instruction itself, the objective of the execution has been implied. Anyway, let's now get into the technicalities. So we are talking about adding 8-bit binaries which are supposed to be in valid BCD form. Now in general, if we talk about the addition of 8-bit binaries, or to be precise, two-digit hexadecimal numbers, after the operations, the result is going to be stored inside the accumulator. Now I told you earlier that what the instruction DA is going to perform, it will depend based on the contents of the accumulator, the auxiliary carry flag and the carry flag. Let me now show you how. Let's talk about the least significant hexadecimal result which has been generated after the addition of these two digits. Now we already know the addition of the least significant two digits is responsible for the generation of the auxiliary carry. So once the addition has been performed, if the least significant hexadecimal digit happens to be less than or equal to 9, and at the same time, if auxiliary carry is reset to 0, try to understand the situation. If the least significant hexadecimal digit, which we have just obtained, is less than or equals to 9, that is the largest symbol in decimal, and at the same time, if auxiliary carry is reset to 0, or in other words, the auxiliary carry hasn't been generated, in that case, the least significant hexadecimal digit won't be altered. Try to understand this. Say in the least significant digits, we had 8 and 8. Now adding these two will result in 16. Now in hexadecimal, 16 is 1, 0. So as a sum, we would have got 0 and the carry would have been 1. So the least significant hexadecimal digit which we got as a result is definitely less than 9. But at the same time, we have generated the auxiliary carry. So this is the reason why we are stating it like this. If least significant hexadecimal digit is less than or equals to 9, and at the same time, no auxiliary carry has been generated, in that case, we can say the generated result is in valid BCD. And therefore, the least significant hexadecimal digit, or we can say the least significant 4 bits of binary, won't be altered. Now let's talk about the next situation. If the least significant hexadecimal digit is greater than 9, clearly we are talking about a situation where in binary if we convert this, it will be invalid BCD or at the same time the auxiliary carry has been generated. Just like the case where we added 8s in this place and due to hexadecimal representation, the sum was 0 but the auxiliary carry was generated. So if the obtained least significant digit is greater than 9 or if it is less than 9 and at the same time auxiliary carry has been generated, that is the auxiliary carry flag has been set to 1, in that case we can claim this is invalid BCD. So the correction needs to be made. Therefore, the DAA instruction will add 6, that is the correction to the least significant hexadecimal digit. Now, this is one solution, but it brings some more problem. And what's that? Say after adding the correction to the least significant digit, it may generate a carry which is going to change the most significant digit. In other words, after the DA instruction adds 6 to the least significant digit, this solution may increment the most significant hexadecimal digit if this results in a carry to the most significant digits position. In other words, if after adding 6, there is the correction to the least significant digit, the auxiliary carry is generated, then it might so happen, the result within the most significant digits place is incremented. In that case, we need to judge whether the generated most significant digit after the correction has been made to the least significant hexadecimal digit is a valid BCD number or not. 
So let's now talk about the most significant digit and it will involve the carry flag as well. Remember, when we consider the least significant digits, we are mainly focusing on the auxiliary carry, but when we are talking about the most significant digits, we will shift our focus to carry. So, if the most significant hexadecimal digit is less than or equals to 9 and at the same time the carry flag is reset to 0, we can say the obtained result is a valid BCD. Therefore, the most significant hexadecimal digit won't be altered. Remember, this is less than or equals to 9, which is the largest symbol of decimal, and at the same time, the carry flag has been reset to 0. So, this condition ensures that most significant hexadecimal digit doesn't need to be altered. However, if the most significant hexadecimal digit is greater than 9 or if the carry flag has been set to 1, try to understand the situation. If the most significant digit is greater than 9, then evidently it is an invalid BCD. However, if it is less than 9, and at the same time, the carry has been generated. That will also mean that the result is a two-digit value. So clearly, the DA instruction this time will add 6 to the most significant digit in order to make the correction. Anyway, enough with theory. Let me now show you these things in practical. We are going to consider four different examples so that we can understand how the DA instruction will actually work. Let's now focus on the first example. Say we are going to add the numbers 53 with 36. Remember, internally the addition is going to be performed in binary, so if we make use of the hexadecimal notations, it will be more relevant. Now, if we add 53 with 36 of hexadecimal, adding 3 with 6, we will get the result as 9. Adding 5 with 3, the result we are going to get is 8. Now look at the result, 8 and 9. Both the least significant hexadecimal digit as well as the most significant hexadecimal digit are valid BCD. In other words, they are less than or equals to 9. So for this situation, the DA instruction is going to add 0, 0 or all zeros with this value. This way, the DA instruction makes sure that none of the digits are altered. Let's now consider the second example. Say we are going to add 4, 5 with 3, 8. Now, 5 plus 8 is 13, which in hexadecimal is D. What about 4 plus 3? It will be 7. Now, look at the result, 7D. Here, the least significant hexadecimal digit is greater than 9. But that's not the case for the most significant hexadecimal digit. So the DA instruction in this particular case will add 0, 06 with the result. This way, the instruction is making sure that the least significant outcome is converted into valid BCD. Now, if we add 6 with D, that is 13 of decimal, the result is going to be 19. Now, 19 in hexadecimal is 13. Try to understand the reason behind this. 15 of decimal is F in hexadecimal. So, 16 of decimal is going to be 10 of hexadecimal. 17 is going to be 11 of hexadecimal. 18 is going to be 12. And finally, 19 is going to be 13 of hexadecimal. So, we will have 3 as the sum. And the carry 1 will be added with 7, which will result in 8. Now notice, if we ignore the hexadecimal notations for a moment, 5 plus 8 is supposed to give us 3. And there will be a carry, which will be added with 4 and 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. Adding that with the carry will give us 8. Notice, the adjustment is working fine. So, we are getting the result not in hexadecimal, but in decimal. Let's now talk about the third example. Say this time we are going to perform the addition between 6, 3 and 4, 2. 
Now adding 3 with 2, we will obtain the result as 5. And adding 6 with 4, the obtained result is going to be A, that is 10 of decimal. Now look at the result, A5. The least significant digit is less than 9, but that's not the case for the most significant digit. It is greater than 9. Therefore, in this specific case, the DAA instruction is going to add 6 0 with the obtained result. So 5 plus 0 will give us 5. Now what about A plus 6? A is 10. Adding that to 6, the result is going to be 16, which in case of hexadecimal is 10. So we will have 0 as sum and the carry flag is going to be set. Notice 63 plus 42. For a moment, if we consider them as 63 and 42, 3 added with 2 will result in 5, and 6 added with 4 is supposed to result in 10, which we have obtained via the carry as well as with the sum. So, this is how the DA instruction is going to adjust the content of the accumulator by adding the correction specifically for the most significant digit. Let's now consider the last example. Say this time we would like to add 6 3 with 8 8. Now 3 plus 8 is supposed to result in 11, which in hexadecimal is B, and 6 plus 8 is 14, which in hexadecimal is E. Now look at the result EB. Both of the digits are greater than 9. So in this specific case, the DA instruction will add 6 6 with the result. And what's the reason for that? Both of the digits, they need corrections so that they can be converted into valid BCD. Now we all know B is 11 in case of decimal. Adding that with 6, we will have 17. Now 17 in case of hexadecimal is 1 1. It is also pretty evident, if you remember, 16 of decimal is 1 0 in hexadecimal. So 17 is going to be 1 1. Simple, right? So as sum we will have 1 and the carry 1 will be added with E. Adding E with 1 will make this F and F plus 6 since we are adding the largest hexadecimal symbol with 6. As a result, we will have 1 less than the addend and the carry flag will be set. Now notice, after any type of addition has been performed, the result will be stored inside the accumulator. At that point, it is the job of the DA instruction to adjust the result according to the valid BCD. And in reality, it will either add 0, 0 to the result, or it will add 0, 06 to the result, or it will add 60 to the result, or else it will add 66 six to the result. These are the four different corrections that the DA instruction will make after the additions have been performed. So this is the purpose of the DA instruction. And with this, we have covered all the arithmetic instructions, that is, all the 14 different instruction types of the arithmetic group of instruction. In that journey of learning all the different 14 instruction types, we actually have covered 62 different opcodes. This I will summarize in the next session. So in this session, we learned about the DA instruction, which helps us perform decimal addition in 8085 microprocessor. Remember, this instruction falls under the one byte long instructions category, and it will only be invoked afterwards the addition has been performed. It has got four different types of corrections which it can make to the content of the accumulator. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to summarize all the 14 different types of arithmetic instructions that we have learned so far. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.